Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Outspoken Live on YouTube. I think we're live anyway. Uh, we should be streaming live. I believe we are. I'm looking at all my stuff and such. Uh, so we got a fun one. Uh, so I know this guy. We rep this guy. Uh, and we're quarantined anyway. So what the hell else are we going to do? <laughs> so he's got Jerry, by the way. I've seen his booth before, not in person, but I've seen you know pictures and stuff. And I'm like, that booth is hot, man. It's it's just good looking, you know. So uh, we're going back and forth and blah, blah, blah. So it turns out he's done all these customizations to this booth. So it's not like that hot, you know, out of the box. Um, so it's pretty sweet. And we figured we'd talk about it um, and let you guys know what he did. Um, because really, no matter what booth you have, I mean, some of this stuff is kind of specific to uh, the brand that he has. But either way, hold on. Let me bring him in. Where is he? There he is. Hey. Jerry Pelletier, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. In the flesh. <laughs> Welcome to South Florida. Yeah, sir. How are you? How's quarantine treating you? Uh, you know, it's it's kind of like the movie Groundhog Day around here. Yeah, no kidding, right? You got kids, man? You stuck at home with kids? I, I have a college student that that's home, and uh, my wife's here. And uh, the same. it's nice to see a new face. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. It's mine. I apologize. <laughs> Jeez, this is the face you get, man. That's a drag. So, okay, let's do some little blah blah about you first. Voice over talent. How long have you been doing this? Nine years. Now you got some big clients for nine years, man. You've done Burger King and Napa and what else? What have you done? What's where's your Yeah, the learning your... curve was kind of steep for me, but I, I, I caught on kind of quick and then I had you know, in the voiceover community there are a lot of people that'll help you out, kinda of like what we're doing tonight. So with with that I was able to, yeah, AT and T and and Burger King and Jagermeister and uh the Oxygen Channel and uh, the Outdoor Channel. So, you know, just trying to make a living down here. <laughs> Nice, man. Yeah, you know, I, but you remember, from, you know, you've been around for a little bit now. Back in the day, everybody used to help each other. Out. And now it's, the community is huge. It's everybody and their brothers in it. So it's tough. You know, you get too many people around. There's always going to be a jerk. But um, but this is good. You are really doing this just to help people out, which is, you know, which is awesome. Um, you know, and to show off a little bit, which is good. So, okay. So you started out with the studio bricks, correct? And this is what we're looking at behind you. This beautiful, uh, yeah, actually, yes. I started out with a whisper room, a single walled whisper room, and then moved up to uh, the studio bricks. And the engineering behind those things is just unbelievable. Uh, very impressed with them. Uh, but when I got the studio bricks, you know, they, they were really designed uh, for musicians. So if you had a saxophone and you were in an apartment, you could hop in there and play your saxophone and not bother anybody. And I think the first people in the United States who had one of these was Depeche Mode uh, in New York. So uh, when you buy one of these, the ventilation system that they give you is called the Aeropack, which is a, and it's quiet uh, for all practical purposes, but it's a fan that fits inside the booth. And any voiceover talent in their right mind would tell you that you will never put a fan inside the booth with sensitive mics like a U87 or a 103. 416, a little bit more forgiving, but you don't want a fan in the booth. So we've got, I'm looking at it over here. We've got a Gretsch Ken booth that we bought years ago uh at the time studio bricks wasn't really much of an option it was kind of everyone was getting whisper rooms and whatever uh so this thing our thing is made up of you know panels these like billion pound panels and then the ceiling you got to put on and try to get it all stuck together and whatever <laughs> um and then we have ventilation as well which i don't remember what we paid but it wasn't cheap and that we can't freaking use that like that button never goes on um you know, and there's supposedly baffles and stuff, and the fans are on the outside. There's like some computer fan-looking jobbers, you know, on the outside, uh, and then two vents on the inside, you know, an intake outtake kind of thing. Um, but th it's not usable, man. You know, we can't use that during session. So it seems like this is something that's, you know, across all of the manufacturers, not just you know, not just studio breaks. Uh, first of all, let me just tell you this: I'm, that I'm not a, an engineer nor do I pretend to be, but I've had several engineers vet this booth out. So this does work, what I'm about to tell you. Uh, uh, secondly, a lot of people might be very familiar with, with this right here, which is what you get with the uh, Whisper Room baffles on, on their thing. Now, the, and to go along with what, what you're talking about as well, is these fans, remember when you were a kid and used to like sing in the back of the, uh, the fan and hear your voice all chopped up? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, that's what they, the blades are cavitating the air. They're changing the air pressure level. So your fan has to be a lot farther away from the booth for all of that cavitation. I hope I'm, I'm not Bill Nye the science guy, but that's what I found out. The fan needs to be a lot farther away from your booth uh, and connected, like 20 feet, if not more. And yours are connected right to the baffle themselves. And although they work at low speeds, maybe, that's not enough air to change your booth over so that you're going to be comfortable in there. No, it's hot as hell in ours. Right. Okay. So, so, all right. So you got this studio bricks. It's beautiful. You put it together and they say, okay, you're going to, here's your option to get a window, a door, whatever the hell. Uh, and then here's our option for uh, ventilation. And you said, no. So what did you, what did you wind up doing? First, I said yes, and I had it in the booth, and I couldn't live with it like that. And I got to tell you, so many people I talk to, they're just, they're suffering in their booths. They're sweating. And the other thing you got to watch out for is the CO2 levels in your booth, which can really mess you up. So, you know, you really need to look at this. So what I did is I, I took the aero pack, was what they call it. I took it off, filled the hole up, and uh, then <laughs> uh, got a couple of these whisp whisper room baffles and drilled four and an eighth inch holes in there and then mounted them on the back. And a lot of people would be scared to do that. And like I said, I'm a journeyman carpenter from a past life. So I would get What, what does that mean? What is, what's a journeyman carpenter? Uh, well, I went through four years of uh, uh, apprenticeship and got my journeyman's card. Okay. So you know what you're doing. So, all right, let's go back just a bit here without <laughs> making this too uh, geeky for people. But, you know, a lot of people you say, oh, I started filling holes and drilling holes and whatever. And people are like, I'm out. Like, not for me, you know. <laughs> Um, okay. A studio bricks, like I said, we've, we've got like a Gretsch can, which is similar to like whisper rooms and stuff where there are these big panels. The studio bricks are, it's like a, almost like a Lego set. There's, there's kind of blocks right. that are put together. Right. But what, what's the construction? What are these things filled with that you could just start drilling holes or, or patching holes or, or you know, what's the construction of this to begin with? Yeah, well, Studio Bricks, uh, they use the MDF board, which is that highly compressed board. And then in between, the best thing I can tell you, it kind of looks like uh, carpet padding, those the, all the little chunks, the pieces in the carpet padding, about an inch of that, and then another MDF panel on the outside. So that's, a, that's their standard wall. And then they have a triple wall also, which is thicker. Here's the thing that I don't understand. I built a booth like many moons ago. And I'll never freaking do that again. Our next booth, they could be like, it's like $100,000. I'd be like, fine. <laughs> That's fine because I will never build another booth. It was horrible. Um, but the big thing when when I was building, and we used green glue and sealing and all kinds of stuff, you know. I think I still got that insulation in my freaking butt, that rock wool, horrible stuff. Um, but the whole idea was to seal everything up tight, you know. So I was very concerned at the time. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I did a lot of research and stuff, but I was overly concerned about any seams and how I was going to fill those seams. It seems like this design, this block design, there's seams all over the damn place. So isn't that, a, a you know, kind of letting air in or letting sound in or no? Hang on. No, I'll, I'll show you one of his things. Just that he walks does. right off the camera. You believe it? Sorry. I'm back now. <laughs> um, is... This is uh, a piece that goes, it, this is what interlocks everything. So this would actually sit down at the bottom part of the seam, and then the other block would come in over the top of it. And with, with, with that thickness and with that in between there, it really seals it off very well. I mean, the engineering, I will say the engineering on this thing is just unbelievable. Even as a carpenter, I'm like, hey, their, their toler tolerances are really tight. What I can tell you is that there's an easy way for you to change your booth over without doing hardly anything that you could, it could be cool in there enough for you to hang meat. Okay. So let, yeah, let, I'm sorry for going off script a little bit. So like we have a script, um, <laughs> ventilation, this was the major problem. So you said, all right, there was a, a ventilation unit in the booth. You said, this isn't working. You pulled it out, you patched up that hole and now you did what? I got a, a pair of uh, whisper room baffles because I had a whisper room before and those baffles worked great. Uh, they're tough to get because whisper room doesn't like to sell just the baffles. There was a pair just listed on VO gear exchange not too long ago, or there are multitudes of sites that show you how you can DIY your own baffle, which is fine too. Cause they're all pretty much the same kind of a, a, a zigzag pattern, you know, with, with some uh, uh, 
uh, insulation material or foam material, you know, inside. Uh, just make sure that it's long enough. And Studio Bricks now, uh, after talking with them, actually has their own, like, baffle as well. So just letting the Studio Bricks and Stoners know that they have their muffler, which is available. And here's another picture of it installed somewhere. Cool. And you can, and you can see now, it, what, what I've done here, and I'll show you in just a second, is I've actually connected mine, like the room I'm in, it has one AC vent. And my air handler is probably about 40 feet away. Um, so by the time the air gets here, all that cavitation and, and everything, because it's got to go through a plenum and then follow a bunch of uh, flexible hose all the way to here, it's just air coming out. You no longer hear that the, the blades of the fan or the, the air handler. So it's just air coming out. And then I run it through the uh, whisper room baffles, and it comes out. And I would say my booth is probably about 72 degrees. I can make it colder, and you don't hear anything. So you've got a central air system in your home that runs heat and ac i'm assuming right very rarely heat in florida right but so you have that system so you have a vent in the ceiling or whatever uh that type of system a lot of folks up uh north their heat they're going to have baseboard heating but this is you've got a forced air system so now right. what you have is instead of that vent just going into your room you tapped into that system so it's coming from your household forced air system into a whisper room baffle that makes the air go beep, boop, 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 back and forth to quiet the, the movement of air, that sound, and then it's going into your studio bricks. Booth, correct. Correct. But even if you, if you don't if you have a forced air system, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to pick the camera up and turn it around so I can start showing you some of this stuff. Uh, there's a, a, another solution to that. Um, which is one of those uh, portable air conditioners that you can, they're upright, you can roll them around. They've got to be connected to an outside window to port the hot air out. Um, and again, I would go to like Home Depot or Lowe's and get a bunch of that uh, insulated flexible hose and put it about 20, 30 feet away, maybe in another room. I have a friend of mine up north who, who has his in the basement and part of the basement's finished, part of it's not. He just runs that hose out to a non-finished part of the basement and then runs it into his baffles and it's quiet and it's cool. Because when you're sitting in a, 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 a vocal booth, if you will, a VO booth, and some people have three by three, uh, four by four. I mean, you're kicking out BTUs. What and size is your booth? My size is five by five, and I probably shouldn't have done that. You should, you should stay away from booths that are square. You know, a three by four, a four by five, five by six would have been better off. And uh, there's a reason for that acoustically. But um, when you're in a smaller booth, it doesn't take long for your body heat to, to make it just unbearable in there. I've heard of people just sweating in there. And here's the thing. There's been a monumental shift because of this uh, COVID-19. And you know, Eric, there are studios in Chicago, L.A., and New York before who would say to people like me, yeah, you have to come into the studio for auditions. We've got plenty of actors around here. And, and they all come in. That's all changed. There's been a monumental shift in that because I've had calls from many of these studios just looking for people who have good home recording studios. And when you finally land that big job and you're connected to a multi-million dollar studio and they've got now they have clients that are probably patched in because they can't come into the studio. Uh, I've done three half, three hour, three and a half hour sessions and you can't. First of all, you're not going to perform well if you're sweating. Yeah. And you're uncomfortable and the CO2 levels are, are rising. And you can't take a break every five minutes in these in these uh, sessions because these people are paying the production director and, and studio time. So, well, mo you know, most clients, uh, you know, from being a, an agent, um, you know, they're going to be in L.A. or they're going to be in New York or something. And uh, oftentimes they want local talent, um, you know, even still today. But most talent or professional talent have their own studios, have, you know, broadcast quality or like we were discussing before, studio quality. Uh, you know, their own booth. So maybe, uh, you know, not that there's any upside to what's going on right now, um, but maybe they're starting to understand, you know, this, is, this isn't this is more difficult. This is actually easier. Uh, you know, if you're not in a place as a, as a producer, uh, you know, where there's a, a zillion actors, uh, you know, where you're tripping over them like in L.A. or New York, um, you know, you open yourself up to every actor in the world when you're, when you're uh, connecting remotely. So, you know, this is really the way to go. But as a talent, if you don't have your own studio, especially after this, um, you know, you're, you're going to be hurting. I think most do. 
Uh, but I think most are sweating it, man, because, uh, you know, like I said, we're definitely sweating over here. Um, so this is cool. All right. So you did a bunch of hacks and I want to get to them. But the ventilation right. thing obviously is, uh, you know, is key. So let's see what you did here. All right. Let me turn this around here for you real quick. So here's one thing. Here's the here's the rolling AC unit that I'm talking about that you can get at any Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. But you don't have that plugged in. I don't. I used to do this uh, before I went to this system up here, where if you can see, it's plugged right into the AC unit, and I'll, I will come around. But I'll, but for like for your system, uh, Eric, you could just buy one of these units here, put it in another room, and then MacGyver, you know, that that flexible hose on there with that metal tape, and then just run it up and take your fans off your your uh, uh, ventilation system and just. Pipe that thing straight in there. You'll hear a Dude, I've got difference. a vent, right? It's on the ceiling. There you go. Right above where those fans are. But here's the thing. My, all right, so hold on. So back there. All right, so those are the baffles, the Whisper Room yep. baffles going into yep. your booth. Right. And then up into the AC system. But now Correct. in your booth, like in Come most around. booths with that system, there's an in and an out. That is correct, sir. So, how, so what are you doing? Look how pretty this is in there, guys. See, I told you. This is a badass okay. booth, right? It looks nice. So, so anyway, all right. So what are we looking at here? Here's a hole that you drilled. Right, four and an eighth inches. Even though it's a four or four inch thing, you have to go at that eighth to actually fit this little, uh, looks like a plastic base port to a speaker. Yeah, it's like for and, a subwoofer or something, right? Correct, correct. And we're going to have a lot of this stuff listed Eric, you're going to post this afterwards, and, and I have links. Of it's like four bucks for one of these. Yeah, yeah. I'll get to, I'll, afterwards, it'll be down in the, you know, if you're here on YouTube, it'll be down in the description. Now, the other cool thing about this, even though it has this, this trim lip on here, you can actually cut that off and just use straight pipe, which is very handy, to tape into that flexible uh, uh, AC duct so that, that this actually goes into your ventilation box. Real Makes a real nice... Okay, but uh, now... See, this is this is where people are going to get confused. So you have just one hole in there, then nope, not two. This is this is where the cool air is coming out. Okay, right here. And now you have another vent or a yep. hole, right? And now where yep. is that connected to? <laughs> Nothing. So, let me let me juggle around here a little bit. I hope people aren't getting sick. And up here is the other hole. And where does that go to? That goes that goes into another. There's two baffles. Uh -huh. Although you could, you could only the see one thickens. on the booth. Yeah. So this one is my exhaust. And what basically what happens is cool air comes in down here and really fills up the booth, you know, as hot air rises and then just forces it out the top. So you're not blowing up your, your studio like a balloon. That'd be too much pressure. And then where is that output connected to? Well, it, it doesn't connect anything. It, it just, just goes out to the outside. It, yeah, it just statically comes out on the bottom of this. Right. So here. why do you need a baffle then? On the backside, so you don't get any noise from the room going up and into your oh, booth. Oh, I see. Just because there's a hole in the booth. Correct. It's a direct link to the outside. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah. I think we got it with the ventilation. So hang out in there because this is cool. And it's much wanna, better than looking at this. Good God. <laughs> All right. I show, so. I wanna, go ahead. Let's talk about your floor here now that we're looking at it. And I want to show you something else for people. There's so many different scenarios that you can run into. Different people have different booth sizes. Uh, they're on the basement. They're on the first floor, second floor. There's just there's so many variables to somebody's booth and recording space. So um, if you're doing long form narration, chances are you're sitting down. But for me, I'm usually standing up because I have the attention span of a gnat. I can't do long form stuff. So there's this stuff right here. And it's foamtiles.com. It looks like They've wood. Got, yeah, it looks like wood, doesn't it? But it's probably about three quarters of an inch, and it just fits together, you know, with those. It's like a puzzle. My, it looks like, I mean, it looks like wood, but those that edging right there, it looks like stuff my daughter used to play on, like a play mat. Exactly. They have all different colors, styles. I did an installation for Steve Kett that his was a zebra pattern. How do you, and what do you just cut that with a razor or? Yeah, a real, a real uh, sharp single edge razor blade and maybe a, a, a some kind of a T square. Get and me, a, can, get me a link to that. We'll put it up afterwards. Yep. Yep. We'll do. People and do. for Studio Bricks people, once you put the flooring in, it's really hard. 
if you have to get to, especially on larger booths, you might get a squeak in the floor. Uh, it, once you put it down, it's like you can't get it back up. So I installed a recessed handle right here so that if I needed to get there, I can easily go there and pull it up. Well, I don't understand. What's under the handle? Oh, it it's, just pulls it, up the whole floor? Well, there's three pieces to this floor. Okay. There's a two-foot section, uh, a center section, and another two-foot section. So you could use, so you could pull that up. Got it. Yep, you can pull that up if you if you needed to do that. If you didn't have that handle in there, it's almost next to impossible to get it to pull it up. All right, so. let's look at. I saw as you're wiggling around all over there. We got the floor. Let me see this collection. It looks like you got a keyboard stand there. Yep, and I do that because it's adjustable in height, lightweight. Easy. Yeah, yeah, I have one of those type of stands. Oh, and you just got a piece of wood sitting on it. Yeah, nice. it's like a Formica, Formica piece of wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, now this is what I wanted to talk about, this big jumble of arms up here, because that looks pretty sweet, man. Oh, look, and you've got one of those hook things. I just did a video on the hook things. Oh, no. Did we lose him? We might have lost him. Oh, hang on. What? There we go. Is he back? I'm back. Wait a second. Oh, hang on. I'm back. Hang on right. There we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> back. Nice. I just went, uh-oh. Okay, so can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, so you've got these gorgeous arms. I know what they are. What are Tell the folks at home. What it's, do we yellow get? Tech, it's a yellow tech system because in any booth, space is at a premium, right? Yeah, well, money's at a premium sometimes too. How much of those yellow tech things are stupid expensive, yeah, right? What you're looking at there is probably a little over $1,000 for the, for the ceiling mount, the pole that comes down, the two small mic arms, and then the, also the boom for the monitor. Okay, so, all right, hold on a second. Before we get into more of this, because I'm curious, that's a bunch of heavy, expensive stuff you've got hanging off that one thing. That how is that attached at the top? Just some screws into the the standard studio bricks ceiling there, or Correct. do you have it shored up somehow? Nope, just four screws. Four screws. Okay, so it's in there, and now you've got two mics, and you've got the the monitor hanging on there too. Correct. Cool. And then you can move all your stuff around and whatever. Yep. Nice. Yep. So now, do you you've got another port where you've got all your cables coming out of it into out to the world? Yes, and that is you know Studio Bricks supplies that. It's right there. I just found some white wrap because the black cables would look bad. <laughs> so it just makes dresses it up a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty. Well, and you got lighting under there too. What do you have? First of all, you yep. got the blue lights, which. The See, did everybody say I got like this new kind of blue orange? Lindsay said it was stupid. What does she know? I thought it was cool looking. <laughs> but you're a fellow blue light liker over there. Well, it's one of those LEDs. You can change the color if you want. But, was it like uh, a I hue kinda, strip or something? I kind of stick with bl a blue. It's it's actually just some the LED lights underneath the foam. So okay. and here's the other thing I wanted to talk well, about. What about the main lighting? Well, the main lighting would be, now I, I put a, a light over here in the booth because the booth is normally kind of dark. But the main lighting would be up here, and it runs around the top right here, and it's white, so it lights up the booth. And that, that's the other thing I want to uh, say about inside the booth. We were talking about you know people kicking out a lot of BTUs. Let me switch this thing around again here, about people kicking out a lot of BTUs in their booth. Well, the other thing is, is that you don't want anything in your booth that creates heat you don't want your preamps in there or uh, tube preamps or or lighting that creates sure. The lighting that I showed you that's above is something this simple right here. And that's been on all day. And I can put my finger on it. And there's no heat coming out of it whatsoever. And there's no buzz or any of that nonsense. No buzz, it. no nothing. And it's adjustable. You can dim it or lighten it up. So you want to have very little equipment or anything that you that you have that would create heat inside the booth on top of you personally kicking out heat. So you've got your interface, your computers, all that jazz like we do, where it's outside of the booth and then you just have a monitor going back in so that you could see what you're doing and then you, you've you got your wireless uh, keyboard and stuff to operate it, correct? But most of my, um, uh, the Apollo and everything I have is controllable from the keyboard and mouse inside the booth. Okay. All right, so what did we miss? Oh, I know what we missed. The, the other kind of big deal here uh, is you raised the roof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So what? So here's, tell me the story. Here, what happened here? Here's an experiment. So George Whittem was here at the house. And right. George has it, been here for, a couple of times. For folks who don't know, George Whittem is like the man. He works with uh, with Dan Leonard, the other home studio master. And those guys are like, they know more than anybody. Um so all right, so you had with him at you said I need I want you to come and do like a, a tune up kind of thing, or you guys were just hanging out or what? Yeah, I had a four by four booth that I that I worked on for, for Studio Bricks, sold that to Brian Peck in, in Kansas City, and then got my five by five. So I wanted George to come back out just to make sure it was tuned up properly. And it was, and and, and it sounded great, you know, for my height where the mics were and everything. He goes, he's a little taller than I am. He goes, Here, come here and try this. And I want everybody to try this if they have a booth that usually it's about seven feet. Just a little over seven feet tall. And he goes, put your head up closer to the ceiling. Oh, my God. I mean, it went from sounding fantastic. And as my head got closer to the ceiling, the, there came the boom. I mean, it was very boomy, unbelievably boomy. And I was like, OK, I'm this booth sounds great, but I'm four inches, five inches away from boom. So what I did. Uh, so if you had your mic, you know, a lot of folks, uh, you see it a lot like animation and stuff, too, where they got their mic hung real high, especially since you're all hooked up with all that yellow tech stuff. If you decided to put it up higher, it, that would have wrecked your sound because all the boom was above you was hanging out up there. Right. It was amazing to me. I mean, you can you know, the smaller the booth, the smaller the sweet spot is going to be when you get that thing tuned. Uh, microphones like air. You got to give them a little bit of air. And it's like when people travel and they build a pillow fort that's too close and too together. It, don't, it almost sounds muffled or booming. Um, so the, the, the bigger booth you can get, the better. The more air a microphone has, the better. Uh, so I was then able, and hopefully I can show it to you here, um, is, okay, most Studio Bricks booth usually go right to the top of the door. That's where they stopped. So that's norm. When you first bought it, that's where the ceiling was. Was correct. Okay. So it was very. I just called them up and I said, "Listen, I want to go up of another foot." And they sent me more bricks, so I removed the roof again the because these things are are like Legos. They're a bunch of blocks, correct. basically. So you said, "Send me another row of blocks for a five by five, and that was that. Correct. And uh, they they shipped them out, and uh, the installation went in pretty. Pretty easy. And uh, and then you base trap the hell out of the extra space. I just basically moved everything up one foot. So it was the same amount. So of- you had the base traps anyway, but then you said, all right, and you raised it all, and now it's up there, and now it's nice. Now, see, it's gorgeous. Now, like I was saying before, everybody, uh, you know, most people can do this. To, obviously, anybody could put down this flooring, and, uh, you know, you'd hang up the LED lights and stuff. The ventilation thing is a little more uh, complex, obviously, but not that much. But this, the roof thing, that's going to be more of a studio bricks kind of thing. If you've built your own booth or you've got a, you know, a traditional panel booth, um, that's going to be tough. This, I'm assuming, was probably pretty dang easy because it was a studio bricks to begin with, right? You had you kind of jacked it up or had some buddies lift it up, and then you stuck the, the blocks in and put it back down, right? Yeah, you just take the, the, the roof comes off in three panels. And then you just put the other panels up right on top of those and you're ready to go. And I'll also say that that foam flooring, what I was going to get to is that when you're standing in a booth for hours on end, that little bit of padding uh, certainly helps you out. And it also deadens the floor a little bit. And uh, it's, it's, it's inexpensive and it's a, it's a cheap upgrade to your booth. So we've got, I keep talking about my own freaking setup. We've got, we got a four by six. And we got like a little section set up in the corners and stuff. You know, we got a bunch of mics here and uh, some mics over there and whatever. And uh, so one day I said, we've got in the kitchen, uh, like in front of the sink and in front of the stove, we've got those like million dollar squishy mat kind of deals. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what are they called? Fatigue mats or whatever. And they're kind of like a gel, whatever, you know. Right. And I said, I got an idea. Let me put one up by the booth. And I said, because she does a lot of long form stuff and she's sweating to death. When she sees this, because guess who's going to be buying it? <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. I'm going to be buying a whole saw after this, man. She's probably watching downstairs right now. Um, but so I put the, I took the mat and brought it upstairs. I was like, try this. What do you think? And it's, we don't have that mat in the kitchen anymore. Now, <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I like it and I'm keeping it. And now it's sitting in the booth. But this is, you're doing the whole uh, floor with this thing. And you don't have a lot of stuff on the floor either. We got stands all over the place, but you're hanging it all from the ceiling. Right. Yeah. Space is at a premium. And, and you know, some people like to uh, uh, get a little creative. And you can at that, that, that foamtiles.com. They've got 
all different kinds of styles and colors and prints and it's inexpensive so you can have fun with that and, and spruce up your booth a little bit and the, the other thing i would say is that like i said at the beginning there are so many different types of people that that like you know obviously this is not the end all be all i mean there's just i i feel for george and dan and tim Tippett's because every time they go someplace it's a completely different uh, environment and some people have their their ways that they like to do things so i'm just kind of showing you my way if you want to cool your booth down and stop sweating, this works. Okay. How quiet is this thing? You, you to George, begin- when, George, when he was here, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, he was impressed. You know, so you got a quiet room to begin with. Yeah, the, uh, the I, booth I would, in. I, I would say on on <laughs> on Adobe Audition, it's like minus seventy or eighty. Because here's the thing, in my experience, mo all. Any booth that I've ever been in that hasn't been, you know, like a custom built in a studio booth has really, depending on, you know, what you expect out of a booth, they kind of suck, which is amazing to me. Like you go to trade shows sometimes or like some of those voiceover things like back in the day, Whisper Room would come in there and they build a booth and the, you know, like in the, the floor and what, and you're like, what are you crazy? Cause you walk in and you're like, I, I can hear every, I mean, you could stand outside and talk to somebody normally in a book and people can hear you. It's not like it's going to be dead, 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 unless this thing is made out of lead or cement or whatever. Right. Um, right. but that's a, th- you know, a studio bricks to begin with is, or any booth is, um, you know, it's an investment. Look. Let's be you and I are fabulously wealthy. So this stuff doesn't matter to us. <laughs> but there some of the viewers, I try to get them to not, you know, I try to weed them out, but they show up anyway. The 99% you know, uh, are showing up. And maybe to them, they're saying, you know, I just spent like eight grand on a booth. I don't want to freak take a drill to it. You know, they're going to be a little <laughs> bit worried that they're going to compromise the thing. So you bought the booth to begin with. And you think it was pretty quiet as you got it. And then once you got, once you were finished raising the roof and drilling holes and all kinds of stuff, do you think that affected it one way or another, aside from the, the sound from the, from the fan? No, you know, in, in fact, when I ordered this booth, I ordered it because normally they'll put their own ventilation hole at the top. It's an extra letter, level of MDF board that they have kind of like a Z channel for the static release of hot air. Uh, and I just, I told, when I ordered this booth, I said, I want no holes, no ventilation holes, just no holes, no aero pack holes, no holes. Uh, so it came with, you know, basically you'd, you would die in there in probably an hour and a half. So it's sealed up. You have three holes, basically. And stop with the jokes. You grow up. <laughs> you've got, so then, yes, you've got the have- air in, the air out, and then you've yeah. got a wire hole somewhere that you got plugged with foam or something, I'm assuming, after all your wires are shoved Studio in. Studio right? Bricks has their own wire. It's, it's a rubber-type uh, thing. It's, it's, it's quite ingenious, and it, it really seals it off. Uh, it's their own proprietary wire passage, if you will. Okay, so now you got all this. Now the most important part. Oh, no, you didn't answer my question. So what did all this stuff cost you by the time it was all done, approximately? Uh, you know, with shipping and everything, probably about 12, 13 grand for the booth that you see behind me. With all your customizations and all that? No. No. Okay. So what did that add to it? Well, the floor was maybe 78 bucks. Um, uh, the, the baffles, I think, sell for like 900 bucks. Uh, but like I said, there's so many DIY, there's so many other alternatives to just using those types of baffles. You know, a baffle's a baffle. Um, uh, and the, uh, the yellow tech stuff is probably a little over a thousand dollars for that. And then there's some base traps and lighting and, uh, things like that. So you're about 15 grand in give or take. You know, and I, I know that sounds like a lot, but when you're doing something like this, you've gotten to the level in your career where 15 grand, one job could pay for that. Um, and a lot of these studios that are in New York, L.A., or Chicago, when they find out that they're going to be connecting to a home studio, you can almost hear their eyes rolling back in their head because they have no idea what they're going to get a hold of. They have no idea what. Listen, man, for fifteen is. grand, that's really nothing, you know. But you hear for they're like, oh my god, how much is that, Mike? Like two grand? Wait, shut up! Really? Like this is you know you got to put money into this. Um, right. so that is, uh, you know, a little steeper than some folks have for their booth, but really that's not bad. And it's hot too, man. It looks good. It looks freaking well, good. Tell and, speaking of how it looks, tell, and well, not me, that this that, means that anything. Extra, that was another added extra bonus because where I live here, although it's not like being out in LA, 
uh, we do have Palm Beach here. So I've had several celebrities come over here because I still have old school ISDN. So like Serena Williams has been over here. Uh, Gino, he, he does a second city in Chicago. He's currently doing the Wendy's commercials. Uh, he was over here. Uh, Talia, who was married to Tommy Matola, she's a, uh, a Grammy Award winning Tejano singer. And Tommy Matola used to own Sony Records. Um, they live real close here. So she's been over here. She does a syndicated radio show. So I've had other celebrities too, but I've had to sign some NDAs on, on those. So um, you, like it make, uh, you like to make it appealing to them when they come in. Don't name drop. <laughs> Eric Shepard. Tell me about, speaking of names. <laughs> I want to know about that branding on the door, man, because that's cool. I mean, it looks cool to begin with. You know what it is? The whole Studio Bricks thing looks free. It just looks cool. You know, all the other booths are kind of ugly. When we were buying this last booth, it was like they weren't ready yet. We were hearing all those horror stories. Uh, like people ordered it from friggin' Spain or whatever, and it was like sitting on a dock for six months, and people were like, the customs was cutting them open looking for like cocaine, like it was a DeLorean right. or some shit. <laughs> you know, we were right. like, no way, man. But now they're awesome and every, you know, everybody's got one and I'm like a little jealous, you know, but yours is the coolest looking, obvious. And then you got that branding on the door. So what was that? Would you just go to a sign shop or what? Yeah. You know, really all that is, is a, a vinyl sticker. And uh, I, I, I brought it down to a sign shop and I told them what size I wanted. And then you just come in here and you, you lay it on there. It took like, I think it was like 60 bucks. So voiceover people like to argue about stuff. One of our uh, <laughs> Mac versus PC arguments uh, that everybody likes to, you know, everyone's got a damn opinion on is the stand versus sit argument. And I've actually discussed this with you before, and I think I could see it behind you, that you are right in the middle of the stand versus sit while you voice argument. Because you got like a stool, but not a stool. What is, what's the deal with this kind of, butt ledge what are you using <laughs> i took it out of the booth because i i wanted more room in there but i'll i'll, I'll show it to you here i've here. i've seen others with this thing let me just pan down here with it so this is a uh a focal uh mobus 2 and it's a sit stand chair you don't actually sit in it the best thing i can tell you is that if you were close to a wall you just kind of leaned against the wall you put your butt against the wall that's kind of what this is. So you, your the your your breathing is still the same. You're still upright. You know, you're not sitting or crouched over. Your diaphragm is still up and open. And and uh, so if you had a, a three and a half hour session, you could just just kick back in that a little bit and uh, uh, and be cool. But you're still in the standing position, just taking a little bit of weight off your knees and your legs after three hours. Well, that's for those who don't know. That's a half of the argument of the stand versus sit thing. Is if you know, you're sitting, you're scrunching up your diaphragm, you're scrunching up kind of everything. Um, and so, you, you you know, it's a little more difficult to project if you need to project. This is what the, uh, there's no right or wrong here or whatever, because there are folks that say, oh, that's nonsense because I'm not, you know, I'm not announcing right now. I'm not projecting. I'm doing whatever. And then, of course, rightfully, there's people who say, well, I'm doing an audio book for it's going to take me seven days to record this thing. And I can't stand that long because yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to die. Yeah. So I you totally got it. That. You have kind of the best with with this butt shelf thing. I did it. <laughs> Sem it it's a kind of an expensive chair. And if you get it, don't sit on it like a normal chair because that won't work. And it, it'll feel uncomfortable. It won't feel right. Uh, and the best analogy I can get is if you're up against a wall and you just kind of lean your butt back against the wall and your feet are almost directly below, you're just out just a little bit. That's kind of what this chair does. It takes a little bit of the weight off your legs and knees if you're standing for a long time. And that's where that foam floor kind of really comes in handy, too. Sure, sure. Jerry, congrats. It looks great. It sounds great. You're great. We rep Jerry, so we know he's the best. If you want him, go to shepherd.agency. Thank you. This yeah, was well, cool, man. Because this, this know, is, I mean, it's really anybody could do Again, besides the, the roof thing, that's kind of a Studio Bricks thing. Oh, what you talk to the Studio Bricks guy. What does he think about all this? Uh, Mr. Bricks. With, yes, I've been talking with Guillermo and uh, Miguel for, for a long time. Um, and they, they've done so many other things now. Uh, if you're familiar with the company WeWork, uh, they're in a lot of big cities and they're basically like a, a commune. <laughs> of course, they're not, nobody's there now, but they're like a place where, if, you know, you just wanted to have your, your you yeah, don't have an cool. office. You just kind of go there and there's a bunch of people there. Well, WeWork's all around the world uh, ordered like they, they saw these booths and they're like, well, we need like 
five in each we work location that we have in case people need to go to a, co- a quiet place to make a phone call or a zoom session or something like that so they just got inundated uh, around the world which has kind of really slowed their production down but uh, uh, miguel who is the usa rep he has ordered in uh from time so that he has them here in the u.s studio bricks one and one plus uh and they're they're stateside here you know while they last so you you get them quicker and i think you save on shipping as well um i've talked to to them about the 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 ac and so is george and there was a time where uh uh guillermo actually went out and did the the portable ac unit like i had that you saw there and he put it in a box and that kind of went by the wayside i didn't see that anymore so the latest thing now is his uh his new muffler system that he has out right here like this yeah you know, and I, I think they only use that for larger uh, booths, but I would, I would, I would put it in my booth. Sure, if you did it yourself, build. Jerry. Yeah. Well, if you if you ordered that from them, you wouldn't have to drill any holes because all the holes would be drilled, and you just have to mount it up and go. Well, you said normally they have uh, th- there's a hole in the ceiling, so I'm I'm assuming they're using that uh, with the arrow pack because they have just like a. It's, it, it, and to me, I don't think it moved enough volume of air for the amount of uh, BTUs a person kicks out. It just it just wasn't large enough to move the amount of air out. But it's just basically like a zigzag pattern within the ceiling, and then it exhausts out the top. So again, you have kind of that baffling effect. So no sound from the outside will get into that top vent because it, it, it zigzags up in the ceiling, uh, kind of like a, uh, a baffle would do uh, back and forth. Um, so they just have a static... Uh, release of hot air at the at the ceiling, and then they have the aero pack, which is their fan on the inside of the booth, uh, down at the bottom. Jerry, thank you. It's gorgeous. It's nice. We love it. Thank you for spending some time. Uh, if you have any questions afterwards, leave them down in the comments below, uh, and we'll make Jerry stalk and come back and answer your questions on YouTube. Yeah, thank Lindsay's you. Tech- Lindsay's texting me, says you got to get to work pretty quick here. I'm telling you, I see a whole saw in my future. I'm going to curse you. <laughs> Jerry. But I tell you, once you get that AC unit hooked up, either with the portable or with your central air system, you'll be like, oh, man, I don't have to suffer in here anymore. Yeah, that's going to be, she would like that. man. Yeah, but you know what? And I thought about that before, too. I said, I wonder if there's a way to kind of plug him because it's I'm looking at it, right? And it's like the fans, like you would shown in the, the beginning of this segment here. And then the vent is, free. I mean, it's right there. But then I was like, I, how am I going to be heating and cooling the actual room? Um, you know, cause all oh, the okay. air is going to be going into the booth, but I'm assuming you just leave your door open. No, exactly. I just leave the door open and it, it, it uh, cools the room down just like it would normally do from, from the ceiling. So, uh, yeah, there's no issue there. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you, Ronald. Everybody's leaving comments here for you. Love that booth. I know, man, it's hot. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jerry Pelletier. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, just look me up on the on the inter Google and and send me a question. I'd be more than happy to answer because everybody's got specific uh, issues and and ways that they want it done. Definitely, I'll get some links up uh, right after the show so you'll be able to see him down there if you haven't seen him live. Jerry Pelletier, everybody, find him on Shepherd dot agency. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks to everybody who is here live and uh, watching in the future. If indeed there is a future, thank you. Goodbye. Uh, Wait, wait for it. Goodbye.